Well, good morning. That's what Norm Abram used to always say. And uh, of course, I used to always watch his programs, beautiful programs. This is what we're going to make this week. It's, uh, I'll give you a wee look. It's a wardrobe. It's two and a half meters high. It's a brick front, which means, well, I'll show you. In fact, I've got it made there just now. So before I start a video, I'll just give you a wee walkover. I mentioned at the beginning about uh, Norm Abram. He used to always start his program by saying, well, hello, good morning. But I always remember him because he would do a wee introduction as to what he was making. Then he'd give a little health and safety talk. He would say to be sure to read, understand and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of injury. And remember this, there is no more important rule than to wear these safety glasses. <laughs> It's a very messy workshop. Look, see what happens when you've got a full week's work to make something like this. Now this unit is two and a half meters high and here's what it's mean by a brick front when the central part is, is protruding further than the two side parts. Now this gets fitted into a bedroom. So I've already done what's called a rod. Let me see if I can find it here somewhere. Here is a rod and a draw in the largest part first, which is the cornice, and that's where the cornice starts here. Maybe you can just see it with pencil. And of course, it's 3 meters 200 long, so all the details the columns, the bead frames, the cornicing, the fascia, the soffit is all there, and it's 2 meters 405 millimeters to the height of a pitcher rail so I've got to go a wee bit beyond that so we'll just take a wee look through here from this side I try to do as much as possible in the workshop so that means even doing the skirting so that the skirting is all made in sections ready so that when it's fitting there is a minimum Cutting on the job. See this bit here. And this bit here, obviously. Okay, it's a nice tight fit. I'll show you some close-ups of the bead frame. Here it is here. Always like to do a bead frame. It is the difference between making a job look really nice or just nice. So and here's outside my workshop. Not raining today. So let's get cracking and see how we get on. Right, uh, always try and do a one-to-one -one drawing so that I can see what's going on. Often it highlights any issues, any problems. This here is part of the cornice. Cornice is made up by four sections and a specific part here needs to be run about three or four times on the pass because it's quite a scoop. Now here is my bead frames and uh, like I said at the beginning I try and do this bead frames as much as I can. It's traditional and it makes a difference between a nice job and a really nice job. Now putting the bead frames together even though I kind of like use my chop saw, set it up uh, with a stop and I cut a 45 degree angle, I still to touch it a wee bit with my chisel just as I get everything more to the size rather than the correct angle. So now that I've got the joints all done on the bead frame, I'll 
glue and screw them together and I've got three of these to make one for each unit obviously and I try and keep on units like this I'll try and see if I can keep the bead frames all exactly the same size for the purpose of when it comes to making the doors so here is the doors I should maybe have done a wee video on the doors it's a profile inscribed cutter that fits into my router table When you work yourself, you tend to develop these methods of trying to hold things in place and it's like on the end I've clamped on a stick so that I can get a, a third hand just to hold this panel in place while I place each panel in position and screw it together. This is a, like a wee trick, I reckon <clears throat> I'm not showing any joiners new tricks here but to pull the panel out to flush to the backing board I'll just put in a wee screw using a claw hammer to pull it out to flush. Now I'm going to start lining up uh, the carcasses. I'm just testing in a bead frame that I'd made earlier. So I'll try and set everything up in the workshop as it would be on the job. And uh, I'm near big loon. Um, so sometimes I've got to kind of like struggle a wee bit and shuffle things about. Yeah, up you come. I don't know why. Like when you're lifting something that if you say come on <coughs> it means you're a wee bit stronger but I'm not sure if that works actually. Now I've got my carcasses in position. It gives me something to work on. I can start to put the, the bead frames and everything temporary of course because it's all to be dismantled and here's the cornice that's pieces that I run earlier and now that the carcasses are all sitting in position so I temporary fixed together I've got a hard size so that I can put this cornice together in a workshop rather than doing this on site now this is the Collins clips that I saw a few of the joiners on the internet using I saw Neil McKinley using these things and they just work an absolute treat so if you've not got them get them now that's the cornice done and all the angles are done I can start to put in my doors when I put these units together in a workshop I make sure that they're all sitting level on the floor so that I can line my doors up properly and you know that when you start to shim a wee bit off you use a sharp hand lens make sure all your blades are really sharp um, because trying to plane with a blunt plane is like peeling potatoes with a soup spoon I love the noise that uh, a sharp plane blade makes it's like a shh so now on to the knobs, I've already designed a knob and it's, uh, it's quite unusual because it seems to be a wee bit oversized and uh, I kind of like the design, I showed it to the customer, I made a sample and uh, they liked it so now I've got these to make, this is the first one of 30 in total, there is 6 
that goes on the wardrobe and another 24 on other pieces of furniture that I've got to do for the same customer. I'll maybe put a photograph at the end of one or two of the units. She's got uh, drawer units and dressing tables and what have you, all in the same sort of design as a wardrobe and it's all for one client. So here I'm just sizing up the stock end of it and then I'll turn it over in my lathe and I'll put in the other side, tighten it up in a chuck and I'm working to a, a template. I've got a wee piece of plywood that I use for a template so that I can try and get them all to be as close as I can to the same. And you've got to remember that this is freehand wood turning and I know that when I hold them together I will see a maybe tiny difference in one of them or of like a few of them I'll notice one that looks slightly different but hey that's freehand wood turning Here's the interior. Um, I've got a wee chest of drawers that I made uh, in the middle unit. And hanging rails in each each cubicle. So here you are. This is a job and uh, it's full of parts. See how we get on. I'm just going to go and set a camera up and uh, do a wee time lapse. You see it going together. This is why I like doing rods with storyboards, Americans call them. That's a cornice drawing in there and the slope of the ceiling, the slope of the roof. And that's it just coming in there. So when I line everything up at one side, if it was too short, it wouldn't touch it. If it was too high, it wouldn't fit in. That's my favourite part of the job, is when the unit comes and everything is fitting beautifully. I mean, the effort that you put into to survey the job to make sure it's right. You see the cornice touching at one side and touching the slope roof at the other side. Everything's just fit perfectly. 